planning is an activity of sending and receiving information by the sender and the receiver. In teaching and learning process, explain means giving information which is organized systematically to show the cause and effect using example from facts on daily routine or any other proofs. The importance of explaining skill is providing the information to the students in every grade and classes, but the process of giving and the quality of the information is different. There are some purposes of teacher explanation. The first is leading the students to understand the answer of why or cause event question. The second is helping the students comprehend the theory and general principle objectively and logically. The third is involving the students in finding the answer. And the last is inspiring students to gain the logical process and the use of evidence to solve the problem. Teachers should know that giving explanation is different from one grade to another grade. Hence, the principle of giving explanation must take into account. Those are First, it depends on student's ability teacher is allowed to give an explanation if there is students asking something. The third is, explanation must be meaningful. And the last, explanation is given in pre-activity, while activity or post-activity depends on the needs. The meaningful and logical explaining skill must have two essential components, planning, and presenting. Planning and explanation cover two sub-components, which are preparing materials regarding analysis of the problem, deciding the type of relationship between components, and study the material needed within the explanation. And the second is considering students' acceptance using these three questions as a guidance as follows. The first is is there any relevance between teacher's explanation and student's question? Is there any relation between teacher's explanation and what the students have a knowledge? And then, is there any appropriateness between teacher's explanation and student's comprehension level? Presenting explanation is a reflection on what teacher had planned before. There are influential components within, such as The first is cleanliness Uterance, sentence structure, intonation and pause are parts of clear explanation Teachers should be fluent in explaining something so students can see a figure of a professional teacher and learning process is able to run smoothly so students, like what I have explained before, that the narrative is different from the real context. If it is narrative and then it has a complication or has a problem, it consists of crisis and also climax, while the real context, it has only series of events without any problem. So if we can see the generic structure of the two types of text, it will be like this. So this is Narrative Text And Recount Text If it is narrative text, the general structure consists of four The first one is orientation The second one, this is complication which is the problems of the story and the third one it is resolution. yes resolution that's good the solution is how to solve the problem in the complication and the last one is reorientation and it is different from recount text the first one it is orientation 
And then the second one, this is yeah. events. And the last one is reorientation. So here we do not have any problem. Do you understand that? Yes. Yeah. The second is compulsion. Avoiding a bias point within the explanation that in the end makes students are hardly understand it, teachers should conduct these two strategies. Perform teaching variations and making a structured explanation. Teacher variation involving the use of intonation and rhythm when uttering something. Meanwhile, a structured explanation, including paraphrasing the material, perform cues and phrase such as pay attention to this point, the most important is, or we will begin with, etc. So students, like what I have explained before, that the narrative is different from the recount text. If it is narrative and then it has a complication or has a problem, it consists of crisis and also climax, while the recount text, it has only series of events without any problem. So if we can see the generic structure of the two types of text, it will be like this. So this is narrative text and recount text. If it is narrative text, the general structure consists of four. The first one is orientation. The second one, this is complication, which is the problems of the story. And the third one, it is... Resolution. Yes, resolution. That's good. Resolution is how to solve the problem in the complication. And the last one is reorientation. Re and it is different from recount text. The first one, it is orientation. And then the second one, this is yeah. events. And the last one is reorientation. Re so here, we do not have any problem. Do you understand that? Yes. yes! The third is exemplifying and illustrating. Explaining will be feasible if teacher engage theory and what students have known. Moreover, utilizing the explanation with interesting examples and illustration makes students understand even a complex material easily. Teacher can start from deductive explanation where theory comes first followed by example and illustration, while inductive explanation is vice versa. So the text that we have read tells us about a person who were accidentally met a star, and that is the examples of recount text. Other examples of recount text are, for example, mm, the experience you have during your last holiday, it can be or the experience that you had uh, on Galunande, yes, it can be. Or the stories of how Michael Jackson can reach his popularity, it is also belongs to recount text. So who can tell me about the other examples of recount text? Yes? A biography of Joko Widodo. Yes, that's correct. What else? The students at the back? Autobiography of Scarno. Yes, that's correct. Next, my question is that, does the news we read in the newspaper or watch on TV belongs to recount text? No. Yeah. What do you think? No. Okay, the answer is? No. Yes. The answer is? Yes. yes. So that is because the news in the newspaper or on TV presents us about the event that happened in the past, right? So it tells us what the event, what is the event, and then when the event happened, 
how it happened, yeah, etc. So we can say that the news also the examples of the context. Get that? Yes. The fourth is reversing. It is good to have the students give a feedback in form of more examples or ask any part that they still confused with. Therefore, teachers should expound the terms to students refers upon the explanation. This part is where teacher decide either to repeat the explanation or to attribute more illustration. So, recount text is a text which tells us about the events that happened in the past in the purpose of informing and also entertaining. Well, do you have any questions related to recount text? Yes, please. So, uh, what is the difference with uh, narrative text? Because I think they are quite similar. Okay, that's a very good question. Is there any students who can help me answering your first question? Uh, narrative text is a text which tells about the story in the past and have a moral value. Yes, it can be. But the point is that the difference is in terms of the problem. Narrative have the problem, the crisis and also the climax, while the recount have a series of events without any problem. Is there any more question? No! It can be concluded that Explaining is a stakeholder in teaching and learning process in which, during this activity, students will grasp knowledge on what they learn. Hence, teachers should maintain the relevance of the explanation to learning objectives, figure the need of it, and attention on students' characteristics or background. We hope this video will help teachers in knowing the essential part of explaining skill and how to practice it in the real classroom situation.